slavery most definitely still has an impact on black people today. Not only black people, but it still has an impact on white people and on the world today. And how could it not? And even to ask that question is to assume that slavery just ended. Slavery didn't just end. You forget that after slavery was abolished, there was a period of indentured servitude, which was slavery without the slave owners having to be responsible for their slaves. Then we have hundreds of years following of colonization up straight until the Jim Crow era in the 1960s. And it continues on today in more subtle forms. So of course slavery still has an effect on people, not just black people, but white people and the world at large because slavery has a legacy that continues today. So it must affect us today. Well, of course, through the signing of documents and on paper, uh, slavery was abolished. But slavery um, made an indelible mark on, the, on, on generations of, of, um, of people. And um, it is still very much there. As a matter of fact, we still have people who, who um, see themselves as, as less than, 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 than people, uh, see themselves as second class and, 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 and even worse in societies. And um, it's very important that we we continue our education process and put things in place to help our children to rise above, above the thinking that they're less than human beings. Uh, slavery was a, a cruel, a cruel thing that happened to our people and, and it is not going to just be turned around just like that. It was systematically um, uh, placed upon us and I think that in order to reverse it, it must be systematically reversed. And um, we have to make our education system aware of the fact that this has to be done and make sure that we put measures in place to turn this around um, in terms of our education. I believe that when you have a people who feel so lowly about themselves that they spend billions over a decade on here, on things like tattoos, things like um, the amount of money we spend on all sorts of makeup, pushed to us by the white media, the power of advertising, and we accept it without any thought. That shows me that uh, the legacy of slavery is still very much alive and kicking, not only in Barbados, but wherever there are black people. And we have the Christian religion, the power of Christianity to back it up. Even Islam is playing an important role in that because nobody ever tells us that the role that black people played in establishing uh, the Islamic religion. So even then, even in the mosque, black people are still looked upon as uh, second class Muslims. It's difficult for me as a white person to address the issue um, of the impact of slavery still in uh, the second decade of the 21st century. Because whatever I say is going to be colored uh, through the lens of those who, who are listening. But I think the obvious answer is yes. Um, perhaps mentally more than in any other way at this point in time. Uh, the social revolution in Barbados with free education, free health care, transformed the social landscape. But it has not necessarily transform the inner landscape, uh, the mental situation, uh, the way, the paradigms that we have, the worldviews that we have that were developed down through the years of slavery and the years of, of, of social disadvantage and deliberate apartheid within this country. To answer that question, I think that we have to go back to Bob Marley from Jamaica, who says, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. I think that at that time it was natural, it was right, and it was appropriate for him to say so. But I must say that I think that that may not be the situation today. I think that we as people, and, uh, as black Barbadians, I think they more look at themselves as Barbadians and they look at themselves as Caribbean people. So I think that more and more we are more into our Caribbeanness rather than our Africanness. Uh, and I think that that is good, uh, but I think at the same time, it is very unfortunate that this month, the month of February, is supposed to be the Black African Month or the Black History Month. And you will notice that not much people are interested in the African history. So yes, it is good to be Caribbean person, 
but at the same time that we need not to forget where we came from, where our forefathers came from. I think that in order for any race to advance, we must know where we come from in order for us to advance. And I think that that is what is lacking. Not that negative attitude, but the positive attitude. Because the slaves who came, they were the brightest, they were the strongest. And the slavery robbed them of, you know, the best of the African men, women, scholars. And as you know, before slavery, they were living in their big cities like Jenny and Mali. And they were fishermen and they were traders. They were scholars. They had university like Timbuktu. You know, so among the slaves who came to the Caribbean and to the Americas, there were many, many scholars. And they were the best of Africa, you know. And they were kind of snatched away from her. But that does not mean that we need to look at it in a negative light. We need to learn more about Africa. We need to learn more about the continent. And we need to see what we can repair our ancestors by being positive, positive looking, forward thinking, forward looking, rather than crying foul that the white man did this to us and the white man did that to us. You know, I think that we should not look at it in a negative light, but let us take that as an example. Let us take it as a learning process, how we can make ourselves better people, make wherever we live a better place to live.